Welcome back to Worth the Effort Woodworking and Class 4 in our Start Woodworking series. This is actually part 3 of that class because when I was editing it out, I found that having this long video, it just wasn't working out. It would be better to break it up. And this is kind of the final uh, part of a three-part series in building this toolbox, which is going to house all the tools we will use in the series with the exception of the bandsaw. Now there is going to be a part four, but it's not that critical. That's It's just kind of little things you can do to the inside of, of the box to organize everything. But as it sits, when we finish this class today, you're going to have a working toolbox. Now when we left part two, we had completely finished the carcass of it and we had glued up the panels for both the top and bottom and installed the bottom panel. The top is going to be a little bit different because there's some minor, minor engineering and I'm going to try to explain the thought process behind it. And there are going to be options that you can investigate, for example, using sliding dovetails and stuff like that. But I chose a simple design because this entire project, the only thing we focused on with the saw was cutting plum and 90. And we're going to continue on that theme. So, come along as we finish up this toolbox in part three of class four of the Start Woodworking series. Now the top is going to be a bit different in that we first need to create two cleats that are going to sit on either end that the top can lift up against. Now to make those cleats, we're just going to use that last 30 inch board we did, probably the ugliest one of the whole entire bunch. And, you know, these are three quarters of an inch. So I kind of like the idea of using those proportions, right? So we did it, this whole box was one, two, and four. So how about if you make uh, three quarters of an inch times four, that's three inches. So what if we make the cleats on either side three inches just to maintain proportions? And to do that, just rip a three inch strip out of this one. You will be able to get both sides out of one three inch strip. Now our tabletop is 14 inches and this board right here is 30 inches. So I basically have more than enough to get two of them but not too much to spare. So the only way I know to get it dead on perfect is I'm going to make it flush with the side over here. And that's the most important part. Then grab a pencil, keeping it still, and mark both sides. Now this is one of those times where having some handsaw skills will really save your bacon. Because, remember me talking about being able to solder the line? It doesn't matter if this thing is out of square. We took the measurement directly off the piece. So if I can draw the line, I can saw the line. And just like that, I'm halfway done. Now just imagine how long it would have taken to walk over to my table saw or even my band saw, get whatever jig I needed, adjust that jig, be able to cut exactly on this line and it was a half a degree off or something like that. Then actually walk back over here. done. Now I just take those same measurements for the other side and do the same exact thing. Now installing these was as simple as you know doing the make make pretty, doing holes the same dimensions as I did down the side, that two to one ratio. And then the only really different thing I did was because this board and this board are going in the same direction, I ran a slight bead of glue just on this board. So 
this one is not glued in. It is screwed in to this board so that if that moves, it's all going to be okay. And then it's just a little bit of round over and sanding. I will say, really knock off these corners because they will catch you. From here, now we get to work on the top. And the idea for the top is we're going to have boards that run the full width of the, the case and they're going to rest on this top area. So the next step that I need to do is just as I did here, rip down two boards that are going to go stretch all the way across and then size them just as I did on these. So now that we've got these two side pieces and they're the same size for proportion, I'm going to take one of them and cut it in half. Now each side over here has about two and three eighths overhang of this piece right here. And what's going to happen is we are going to want to slide these boards underneath here and be able to drop it down in this right here. So grab a yardstick or some kind of stick, drop it in here. We're going to slide this all the way back, rest on the yardstick. And here, and that way, we can now measure exactly where this needs to be in order to pass past this board. Then mark a line, saw line. Though I will tell you, because these don't have to be perfectly square in this setup, I'm going to cut that on the bandsaw. I'm going to try to explain how this top is going to work. Right now it is actually upside down. Whenever we put it on, it's going to be the, the plank is going to be underneath these. We have a solid piece right here, and then I have the two pieces there. The idea is the solid piece is locked in, and we can actually slide this piece in until it hits a stop. This piece will come back down and then move over here to the solid piece, which means that this solid piece right here cannot overhang the edge more than this piece because that's all it's going to move before we can slide it back in. So in order to make this work, right now I've got them upside down. I am going to take the half piece and I'm going to hang it over maybe a sixteenth of an inch or something like that just by feel and then I'm going to make a mark in the middle. That is where this bottom board needs to be. And just guesstimating, I'm going to draw three little spots where I can put screw holes. Notice I'm not putting them down the center. By trying, putting them in a triangle, they actually get more grip over the whole board. They're not going to pivot off of one central point. In other words, they'll control warpage of this board. So from here, I'm going to set my marking gauge to that distance right there. Then real quickly drill these holes. Then I'm going to start driving this screw right here. Basically I want to drive it to a point where it is slightly coming through the back side. I'm going to put a little bit of glue in between my screw holes. Then, just doing the center, not the outsides, just the center, I'm going to line it up as best I can with the two outsides and press it down on that center screw few clamps to hold it. I am not worrying about it being perfectly parallel at this time. And then flip it over and screw it down. And what I just created was a center pivot point. So that now I can come over here, slide it in, and then by pushing against it, it's going to not only center this on the board, but it's going to make it level. So now that I have that just as it is, 
I will very carefully clamp one side so it doesn't move. And then I can flip it over and drive in those other two screws. Now if for some reason you knock it off and you, you need to, just undo these two outer screws, drill two new holes, and then redo the process. So with that done, you should be able to slide it in, bump it up, and line up the other side pretty close. Once you do that, just remove the inner one, draw a line, and that's where you need to secure this board. So what I would do is transfer that line down the side so that you can see it on both ends. And that'll get you something you can line up on the edges. And put in three screws. And damn it, I'm getting tired, so I put the screws in the wrong part. Meant to, meant to put the holes in here, so I'll redo that. And I think I forgot to hit record, but what I did was I pre drove these three in so that they just protruded through then I put a bead of glue down the middle line this edge up with that pencil line and press it down into those protruding screw bits before I clamped it and those screw bits coming through ever so slightly they kind of bite so it won't shift while I'm clamping it and then it's just a matter of finishing screwing the those screws in And just like that, we now have ourselves a working top. <coughs> you slide one side all the way over, drop it down, slide it back, and then this space right here will lock it together. So all we really need to do is figure out a way to secure this here. And remember me telling you that not to worry if this piece right here got a little bit off just like 20 seconds ago. Well, it's a little bit off of mine. See? how I've got a gap right here. So the easy thing I can do is plane away a little bit of wood on this side until that gap is parallel. I don't mind if it moves back and forth a little bit, but I would like for it to have an even gap. So that's a simple as grabbing your block plane and on the side that you have to remove stuff come over start down here take a thin shaving come back a little bit another thin shaving come back a little farther and work your way back until you take a full shaving you do want to be able to take a full shaving when you do that one. That gets you your straight line. Then test it out. And keep working it until you get the parallel gap you want. So now, I don't mind if it's a little gap, but it's a parallel gap. So now all we have to do is figure out a way that we can secure this piece. It doesn't have to be too tight. It just needs to stay there so this thing won't move. And that's a perfect use of magnets. Take one of the sticks we had left over when we chopped these things down. Position it off the edge on one side. Make two marks where you want the magnets to be. And drill some holes in that. Those holes will allow you to transfer the line in the same exact spot on both the top and bottom board. On this board, I come over and make my indentation. I make my indentation. Then I'm going to flip this. Register this side against it because that was registering on over here. 
and transfer those holes to this thing. And then it's simply a matter of drilling a hole to the depth of whatever you magnets you are doing. And these magnets are li they're 12 millimeters, but that's a little bit smaller than a half inch Forstner bit. So I'm just going to use a Forstner bit, drill holes in both the top and the corresponding piece in the right spots, and you've got it locked down. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, but I just checked my cabinet and I'm out of 5 minutes epoxy and it's well after midnight. <laughs> so I'm going to try a little hot glue to see if those magnets will stay in with that. If it doesn't, oh well, I'll epoxy it later. Now this is completely optional, but that right there is going to drive me nuts. So I am going to just mark a straight line parallel with the side as best I can. And then after the glue dries, I'm going to cut that off on the bandsaw, on those lines, so at least they'll line up. Well, there we go. A fairly secure toolbox. It's not going anywhere. You can, it'll rattle around, locks down. And I want you to think about what we actually learned in this class. And it came down to one thing. Sawing to the line at 90 degrees. We didn't do any curves, we didn't do any angles other than 90. And it was all square cut where we allowed the, the saw to bounce itself. We also got to play around with a little bit of chopping with a chisel to get out of the waist. And you could see how the wood balanced on either side of the edge. That's what caused it to move back and forth. And then we got to play around with making pretty in the planes that we used. Those plants also helped us a lot in fitment. So we basically used the holy trinity of hand tools. And what did we make? We made a toolbox. Now in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to kind of finish this thing out. Put, make layouts for all the tools on the inside, add handles, add a really cool tool rack so that you can make tools readily available that you're currently using. But even without that, Let's see what this thing holds. Did any of y'all notice my tool bench is pretty much empty right now? So, unlock it, bring it out. Oh my! We even have two power tools. What are those doing in there? I have striking implements. I have my sharpening implements. I have drilling implements. I even got the drill bits in there. We have our two planes. We have all our layout instruments. Got some sanding instruments, some driving instruments, drillers, card scrapers, coping saws, spoke shades, tape measure, my tool roll with all my chisels, two large squares, and three saws. Gee, my bench is now full again. So I hope you enjoyed this video, learned quite a bit, want to get out in the shop and actually make this thing because it really was a simple build. And please remember that content creators like me do this kind of on a value for value proposition. So please look down in the description, not only for links to all those other lessons I talked about through this series, uh, but also ways that you can kind of help subsidize all this uh, materials and time we spend in that. And in the end, I always want you to remember that it is worth the effort to learn, create, and share with others. Be sure and come back for part four where we finish this, the interior out.